Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to talk about some basics of the sustain pedal or right pedal on the piano, what it does overall, what goes into fundamental piano pedaling technique of the right foot, since that's what operates the sustain pedal, and just a simple introduction into some basic types of pedaling. And on this channel, I hope to share with you some strategies, insights, methods, etc., often of my own creation, that I hope will help you in your piano playing, and hopefully even other areas of your life as well. So, the sustain pedal, in simplest terms in my mind, one of its primary functions is to keep the sound of the piano going without the use of your hands. Because, of course, typically we play a chord, let's say, and we're holding it with our fingers, and then once we let go of our fingers, then of course the sound would stop. But if we keep holding the right foot and we use the sustain pedal, then we can keep the sound going even without the use of our hands or fingers at all. And another one of the most important things the sustain pedal does is that it adds greatly to the richness and sonority of the sound. And I'll go into a little bit of why that is. So typically when we play a note or a chord on the piano, Let's say I play this note. So a hammer has struck a set of strings. We can continue to hear the sound because the strings are still vibrating, although it's starting to get softer. So I'll play it again. So the strings are vibrating. And then once I take my hand off, the sound has stopped because once I removed my finger or my hand from the key, there are dampers that came down. And I sometimes think of this, and I'll ask students to think of this as like a hand coming down on guitar strings, right? You strum a guitar, and then of course if you, and I don't play guitar, unfortunately, and if you touch the guitar strings, it will stop the strings from vibrating. So this is like the hand coming down on the guitar strings, the dampers have come down on the strings inside of the piano, and that's caused the sound to stop. If I play a whole bunch of notes, and then I let go of all of them, the hand has come down on all of those different strings. And of course, if it's an electric keyboard, then it's just a simulation of this. Now, what the sustain pedal does, like I was saying earlier, is it prevents all of the dampers from coming down. So once I put this down, no matter how many keys I play, the sound will continue. And probably you've tried this before, or maybe you're already advanced pianist, in which case you already understand how this works overall. But so I'm playing. Playing these random keys, the sounds continue to sound. Once I let go, it's like many hands coming down on guitar strings, or in this case, the strings inside of the piano, and all the sound will stop all at once. But like I was saying earlier, part of the reason for the richness of the sound that results when we continue to hold the sustain pedal is that, remember that the dampers are not coming down on any of the strings while the pedal is held, and so there's much more opportunity for sympathetic vibrations. I don't know if you've ever played the piano or an instrument or sung or done anything that makes sound and then some random object like a metallic object or something another part of the room vibrates that would be an example of sympathetic vibrations and i think in simple terms basically when you hold the pedal down there's much more opportunity for other strings inside of the piano to vibrate as well and thankfully that results in a more beautiful sonorous rich timbre tone or sound quality so some basics in terms of pedaling technique. There are many different types of pedaling techniques. I just wanna go over probably, I, I think the most straightforward and most simple and just an intro to that. Hopefully you'll like my cute little cat socks here. Uh, I would use the ball of the foot and sometimes I've described this behind the big toe. Sometimes people talk about between the big toe and the second toe, but basically somewhere around this area. And this is the part that you would put onto the rightmost pedal. And when you are depressing the pedal, make sure it goes down all the way to the bottom. And when you release the pedal, make sure it comes up all the way to the top. And so when I'm holding the pedal down, that is when the sound is sustaining, like I was demonstrating earlier. So I have it down all the way. And then once I release the pedal, then of course the sound will stop. So do not lift your entire foot off like, like this. I would maintain contact with the ground with your heel. So this is probably one of the most common issues with beginners that are starting to pedal, that they'll lift the whole foot off. This results in a big loss of control and you'll probably make your leg tired and such over time. So, so keep that heel in contact with the ground. And also the ball of the foot, it should maintain contact with the pedal 
at all times as well too. So when you have it down in order to sustain the sound, to press it all the way to the bottom, and then when you lift it up, I wouldn't lift your foot up like past the, like I would still keep contact with the pedal the whole time, even as you let it all the way up into its starting position. And don't do this with a, like if it feels very effortful, then you're probably carrying tension in your leg or in your foot. So if you're like tensing your leg a lot, try to gently let go of that. It should feel pretty much as easy as if you did this. It should not take a great deal of physical strength or force. So if it is, then it's probably excess tension that you're carrying. And then if you can be aware of that, then you can just let that go in your leg or in your foot or wherever you're carrying tension. It seems like it'd be a relatively simple thing to put the pedal down all the way and lift the foot all the way, but it's very common to not have put the foot down all the way, or you lift it and it's only halfway up. Again, there are more advanced pedaling techniques, but I would advise a clean down all the way, up all the way, without effort, don't overextend the toes backwards or anything strange like that, heel in contact with the ground, and again, down all the way, completely to the bottom, uh, effortless, and then lift all the way up, but still maintaining contact with the pedal, but make sure it's completely in its starting position. So those are just some thoughts there. Let me see. I think I can show probably from this view as well too. Okay. So again, when you're changing the pedal, wait, let me adjust this a little bit. When you change the pedal, don't go like this and lift your whole foot off. You still want to maintain contact with the ground with your heel. And then when you change, like, so you lift your foot up all the way and then you put your foot down all the way. Actually, if you don't know what I mean by change, that's okay, just ignore that for now. But let's say when you put the foot down all the way, it should be something like this. And then when you lift your foot up, something like this. So down all the way, not with great force or anything, very nice and easy and then you lift your foot up all the way, but still maintaining contact with the pedal. So briefly, some basic types of pedaling, and I need to stop myself from going into any kind of elaborate explanation. So direct pedaling, a lot of the time people will call it this, is when you pedal and you play the chord or you play the note at the same time. So for instance, if I play this chord and I put the foot down at the same time, it's like hands and foot down at the same time, and then I lift, that would be an example of direct pedaling, right? I pedal with this chord. So both hands and foot are going down together. Sometimes we may have that in some of our, our music and it might just be like a simple little like dotting of the pedal. A lot of the time I find it's appropriate to have preliminary pedaling. I don't know if that's a standardized term, but basically I've heard it referred to that way. Sometimes you have your pedal down before you even start so that that richness starts like immediately. So it would produce a slightly different effect, but your foot would be down already. And so it's already like, you know, the dampers are not coming down anywhere. And so then we're gonna get that rich sonorous effect right away. And I'm going to talk a lot more about legato pedaling in future videos, or at least I'll talk some about it. Maybe I'll talk even more about it uh, in the more distant future. And this is basically keeping the sound going. Like if the hands are not holding the notes, then the foot is continuing the sound. If the foot is not holding the, the sound, then the hands are continuing the sound. And it results in this legato or continuously connected sound. So I think that's why it's often referred to as legato pedaling. And this is a bit counterintuitive, but it's a very, very important technique if you're wanting to play beautiful, soundtracks from movies that seem, you know, connected, sonorous, rich. If you're wanting to play first movement of Moonlight Sonata by Beethoven, if you're wanting to play Pure Lees, River Flows and You, all of this uses legato pedaling. So I think I want to say briefly, if you just hold the pedal, and don't change it at all, it's going to result in a lot of messiness. So we will need to change the pedal, we'll need to lift it up to clear the sound and put it back down in order to clean up the sound, keep everything nice and clear. And so this is the way to go about it. Let's say I'm playing a chord, I have the foot already down. When I play a new chord, if I want to keep the sound going continuously and have it nice and clean, I actually need to lift my foot 
up when I play. So my hands are kind of going down, right, when I play my, with my actual hands. If you think of this as down, the foot will actually go up at that time. So the moment I play this, my foot will go up, and then I'll come back down. When I play a new thing, my foot will go up. example of legato pedaling. I'm actually going to go into even way more detail in another video, but you can try this even with single notes. So let's say you, I play a single note. It doesn't matter about piano technique or hand technique here as long as you you feel relaxed. So let's say I have my foot down already. I play a single note. Now when I play this next note, I'm going to go up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So again, at the moment I play the note, I will go up and then back down. At the moment I play the note, I will go up and then back down. Up, down, up, down. Okay, so if you try that and, and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm not getting that. I'm not getting the legato pedaling. Like I was mentioning, I believe I'm going to be making some other videos where I'll go into even more granular detail about how to go about doing that. So anyway, so hopefully that was a useful introduction for some of you. And even if you've been pedaling for a very long time, I find it's so important to continue going back to the basics. Even just making this video, it forced me to think about like, oh, how do I articulate that? How am I thinking about it? It, it, it seems like the most basic things, but the fact that Sometimes we were yelled at for pedaling that wasn't clean enough. Actually, it, it, it happened more often maybe than we would have liked, you know, me and some of my colleagues. It just goes to show that even these relatively simple things like lifting the foot all the way or putting it down all the way, it's not as simple as it first appears. So those fundamentals are so important. Anyway, so if you found this useful, please like, subscribe, let people know about the channel and looking forward to the next one.